On our planet, there seems to be an infinite number of beautiful places one can visit with an equal number of spectacular things to admire. It requires nothing more than a curiosity to observe what is all around you. The miracle of nature manifests in countless ways, from breathtaking vistas to the simple movements of a common heifer. The purpose of this program is to present you with the extraordinary diversity of our miraculous blue planet so that you can discover these things for yourself. Today, we will visit Iceland and marvel at its numerous hot springs. But it is also steeped in a rich cultural history. And there's nothing quite like the rejuvenating thermal baths and breathtaking Nordic vistas you find in Iceland. Tropical Laos is also inseparably linked to nature. Only here, monochromatic white glaciers are replaced by lush green scenery. We will lose ourselves in the intricate cave labyrinth of the Laotian underground only to re-emerge into the sunlight and get up close and personal with the water buffalo on the Mekong River. But first, Iceland beckons. The Republic of Iceland was established after declaring independence from Denmark in 1944. The island's history, however, dates back centuries. Ingolfur Arnason, one of the very first Viking settlers, admired Iceland's endless plains and volcanoes as early as the year 874. The land was arable, and only 60 years after Arnason's arrival, some 1,500 farms had established themselves here. Ingolfur landed in Iceland in a drakkar, a traditional Viking ship that, at the time, was also considered a devastating warship. Jan Gunnar Arnason built a memorial to this ship called the Solfar, in the port of Reykjavik. Ingolfur Arnason is closely linked to this place. Over 1,000 years ago, he settled precisely here. At that time, he called it the Smoky Bay. Today, we know it as Reykjavik. There exists no name more appropriate for this place. Fuming hot springs rising from the underground at temperatures between 98 and 102 degrees Fahrenheit are ever-present. There's no reason for Icelanders not to bathe in them all year round. However, the most famous Reykjavik bath, the Blue Lagoon, isn't natural. It came about as a direct result of the Svartsengi geothermal power station which releases processed water back into nature. Why not make use of such a handy byproduct for a bit of fun and healing? The Blue Lagoon water is rich in silicon dioxide. It is beneficial for healing skin disease such as psoriasis. However, the white masks are the main reason why people go into the warm water. This is some pretty amazing mud. It cleanses, nourishes, and rejuvenates the skin. Mineral water is so common in Iceland that you are bound to find it in just about any pond. The vast island feels almost uninhabited with its population of only 320,000 people. Their homes are dispersed over immense plains and beneath high mountains. The isolation of these homesteads is hardly surprising since a third of Iceland's population lives in the capital. The rest preoccupy themselves mostly with farming. Momentary appearances to the contrary notwithstanding, life in Iceland is continuously under threat from harsh winters and volcanic activity. The first generation of settlers to this land were not daunted by either the ash nor the bitter cold. And so, in the year 930, they established one of the first parliaments in the world called the Althing. The Althing gathered beneath a steep, sheltering rock face. It served as protection from the sharp wind for the speaker and its members. The sheltering was necessary because one would otherwise never be able to be heard over the lashing wind. And without shelter from the bitter cold, none would have been motivated to pursue something as tedious as politics. The activities of the Althing were interrupted in the 13th century when its efficiency was undermined by quarrels among the chieftains of the various settlements. Several rivers, 
fed either by water from underground sources or from thawing glaciers, flow from inland to the sea. The longest, Piorsa, is only 230 kilometers long. The shortest ones measure just several hundred meters. Each and every one of its 17 waterfalls are unique in one fashion or another. Its hostile and mostly barren landscape strongly resembles that of New Zealand. The Stroker Geyser, Icelandic for churn dash, proves that water can flow upwards too. Stroker first appeared in 1789 as a result of an earthquake. 100 years later, another earthquake caused it to cease. It was only in 1963 that the locals uncorked it, enabling Stroker to happily explode and sputter on just as it used to. Magma heats the water to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. As the water cannot evaporate through boiling, it simply erupts every 10 minutes in a 20 meter high geyser exploding from its depth of 23 meters. The mineral rich water creates mineral as well as sulfuric sills. In Iceland, these encounters are commonplace. Three-quarters of Iceland's barren plains are damaged by erosion, resulting in 7,000 square kilometers of agriculturally infertile land. Geysers and hot springs aren't Iceland's only attraction. The numerous breathtaking waterfalls veiled in legends and myths are equally as alluring to visitors. The Godafoss Waterfall, or Waterfall of the Gods, stood witness as a certain port gear threw carvings of pagan gods into its waters to demonstrate his total acceptance of and conversion to Christianity. Dedifoss, the biggest European waterfall with a flow rate of 200 cubic meters per second, bottoms out into a 44 meter canyon. More than 1,000 years ago, the Vikings introduced a very special breed of horse to the island. All these years later, this horse has earned its right to be considered part of the Icelandic family. The Icelandic horse has adapted well to withstand the harsh winters. It also has a rather long lifespan. The Icelandic government prohibits the importation of other horses or the return of previously exported horses back into the country. Local horses are protected from importation-borne diseases and enjoy excellent health. Because the terrain seems endlessly mountainous, the horse is often the only practical means of transport. It is commonly used to look over one's farm or reach a neighboring homestead. These horses are well known for their stability and sure-footedness. Icelandic horses harbor explosive energy, which is evident in a particular fast-paced gait. It is called Tolt and is innate to the local horses. Thanks to Tolt, a fast ride on such a horse is pleasant even for a complete beginner. Original farmhouses from the 10th century were usually made of stone, clay, and grass, as trees hadn't been planted on the island, and the craftsmanship of brick burning had not reached Iceland yet. Vast fertile valleys are protected by barbed wire fencing against an enemy from the domesticated range, the sheep. Sheep flocks are capable of quickly destroying the thin layer of volcanic soil out of which grasses and plants grow. The fragile ecosystem requires protection. No sheep are in sight at the foot of the volcano. Plant life is compromised by the continuous landslides and a minimum of nutrients in the soil. Until the 18th century, people were sent to inhospitable areas for punishment. Unless they were able to settle close to a hot spring, they did not usually survive the bitter winters. Life here is indeed minimal. The landscape is devoid of color, save for a few alpine plants. Fortunately, 
the waterfalls are spared the curse of hydroelectric plants, principally as a result of the more popular geothermal power plants. As a result, the waterfalls remain unspoiled and beautiful, attracting visitors from all over the world, including those who have seen both the Victoria and Niagara Falls. Let's take a look at some of the local culture. We are at a traditional Viking festival where past and present are entwined. Icelanders, seen here feigning the battles of their ancestors, may be separated by a couple of centuries from the real Vikings, but genetically speaking, they are very close. Iceland is something of a genetic tint. Iceland has never had mass immigration. The largest immigrant population comes from Poland. Today, the Polish descendants only number about 8,000 people. Icelanders thus form an excellent genetic sample of Homo sapiens. Icelanders today are less warlike than their descendants, but Viking blood still courses through their veins. Icelanders are also known for their love of singing. Two Icelandic singers that are internationally known are Sigur Rós and Björk. They take great pride in Tvisongur, a duet which apparently gives every real Icelander the shivers. Paul Logasen managed to throw a 140 kilogram stone over the hurdle 10 times and has become the definite winner of the competition. The origin of the traditional Viking festivities is not merely a way to pass the time. The disciplines that have been carefully selected are designed to develop dexterity and speed historically indispensable qualities during raids. The maidens are trying to beat the drum at the blindfolded Viking's feet. And here, ear pulling tests the threshold of pain. Iceland is also a place of tranquility, natural balance, and almost meditative nooks. In the summer, many places, uninhabited by man, attract adventurers wishing to test whether they are capable of surviving a week in the wilderness without the internet or a cell phone. Here, they must be able to survive using only their equipment and supplies. This seems the place from where the name Iceland would have come. In this natural park, there are 8,000 kilometers of ice, sometimes up to 900 meters thick. It is the largest glacier in Europe. Although Iceland is close to the Arctic, the coast remains ice-free during winter due to warm North Atlantic sea currents. Even a thawing glacier can pose a great threat. Problems with wild water are not uncommon. It is because glacier rivers, found mostly on the southern part of the island, constantly change their course. It is why the longest bridge in Iceland was built over the Skedara River. Sadly, not even its thousand meters could withstand the giant flood caused by a volcanic eruption under a glacier in 1996. Looking at the mass of thawing ice, one cannot but ponder the question of global warming. It could bring a fast end to the glacier. Here, the situation is not grave just yet. This is what is called calving. As water buoys the iceberg, immense forces coalesce and cause massive ice blocks to break off. The ice block turns in the water, showing the thawed blue part. The color is influenced by the inability of ice to absorb the wavelength of blue light. Considering the innumerable natural phenomena and vapors rising into the air, it is no wonder that Icelandic culture is replete with myths and fairy tales. They consider dwarves, elves, and gnomes to be inhabitants of their world, 
and call them the hidden people. What causes all the volcanic and thermal activity? The answer is quite simple. It is right here, beneath Iceland, that the American and European lithospheric plates meet. The immense pressure with which they move against one another not only caused the formation of the island, but also opened numerous vent holes relatively near the Earth's core, causing the flow of magma and minerals. There are over 200 volcanoes, of which 30 are still active. The French writer Jules Verne placed the plot of his famous book, Journey to the Center of the Earth, into one of these volcanoes without ever setting a foot on Iceland. Nevertheless, many adventurers have tried to explore these volcanoes using his guidelines. Suffice it to say, none had any success. It is unbelievable that a landscape adorned with murmuring waterfalls lies in the same country where deadly geysers, moody volcanoes, and ripped up glacial fields are found. We treat ourselves to one last look at the monumental wonders before us. Our journey through Iceland is nearing its end. It was accompanied by the ever-present smell of hydrogen sulfide and an immense amount of energy produced not only from the Earth's core, but also in glaciers, waterfalls, and humans. Should one try to remember a typical view that symbolizes Iceland, it would probably look like this tiny Earth vent, which just won't come to its senses and keeps spouting hot vapor from the Earth's open veins. Welcome to Laos. The Mekong River is an inherent part of its heritage, as are the other natural wonders and the Buddhist religion. Laotian history traces back to the 14th century, but modern Laos, as we know it today, was founded in 1945. We are currently in the provinces of southern Laos. The natural beauty of this region is astounding. It abounds with flavors and scents, and it is truly enjoyable, even if you are on your own. The real treasure of southern Laos is the unpolluted and abundant water source. Waterfalls are both aesthetically pleasing and also act as an important protection it is because of these waterfalls that the Laotian rivers are so extremely difficult to navigate upstream. At the same time, the waterfalls function as an efficient water flow control system during floods caused by the rainy season. Tranquil waters from Laotian rivers and benign jungles lined with high mountains make up only a small part of Laos. There also exists an underground kingdom. Deep within the mountains, there exists an intricate maze of limestone caves with unspoiled karst formations created over the centuries by erosion from water. These caves are managed entirely by local people. However, there are many more caves that have yet to be fully accessed or even discovered. Nikola Tesla sang praise to the waterfalls as an inexhaustible source of ecological electrical power for all sorts of appliances. Laotians guard their waterfalls carefully, both against pollution in their vicinity and also against the greedy intentions of various energetic concerns. It is thanks to this mindful approach that allows us to interact in harmony with nature.
the very cause behind the existence of such pristine natural nooks in Laos, such as this one in particular, is nature itself. The elemental expansion of the jungle often swallows up entire buildings and makes it next to impossible to lay roads and railways. More than half the land area of Laos is taken up by jungle and rainforest, while only 10% of the land remains for agricultural purposes and pastures. Both the rainforests and rivers are a source of sustenance for the people in times of poor rice harvests. The Tat Phan waterfall originates in a small river running down the Bolaven Plateau and ends in a 120-meter abyss surrounded by wild jungle. Laos is sometimes referred to as the kingdom of a million elephants, even as the numbers of elephants living in the country are decreasing due to poaching and the relentless expansion of civilization. On the contrary, the number of water buffalo is on the incline. The water buffalo, or bubalis bubalis, was initially a wild animal, but did not resist the domestication process. As such, over the last 5,000 years, it became a beast of burden used in agriculture and also as a plentiful source of meat and milk. Due to their great numbers, 153 million animals in Asia alone, the water buffalo is nicknamed the living tractor of the East. This baby Bubalis Bubalis is pattering around its lazing parents, completely unaware that soon enough it will be harnessed. Although seemingly harmless, the water buffalo is statistically a very dangerous animal to humans. The Mekong River is the world's 10th largest river and the seventh longest river in Asia. Its length is estimated at 4,909 kilometers from the Tibetan Plateau, this river runs through China, Burma, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam. There are several reasons why it is referred to by many names, including the Great River, the River of Nine Dragons, the River of Miracles, and in Laos, the Mother of All Rivers. There is, however, one main reason for the various names. The Mekong River is to Southeast Asia what the Nile is for Egypt and Sudan, the source of life. Along the Mekong River, there are four dams, many more along its tributaries, and more still in the planning stage. Here we are looking at the Ban Khon Cataract, one of the biggest in the world. The Mekong River is home to a staggering number of species of fish. Among the largest of these is the giant river carp, which can grow to nearly five feet and weigh 150 pounds. This damaged bridge proves that the Mekong River resists any human interference. Here, unceasing water surges over the Ban Khon from Laos to Cambodia, and with it, ends today's episode. An episode which allowed you to submerge into the hot springs of Iceland, discover Icelandic glaciers, and finally, penetrate the dense Laotian rainforest and explore the dark caves of Laos. Our journey to the miraculous nooks of our planet comes to an end, for now. On the next exploration of our compelling and bountiful planet Earth, we will enjoy visits to three different gems of the European continent. Starting off in the north, we will explore the pristine mountains of Lapland. From there, we will attempt to conquer the peaks of the Swiss Alps. From the Alps of Switzerland, we will go to France where in the wine region known as Champagne, they know a thing or two about making the best wines in the world. Then, we will end adventure in Gibraltar, one of the pillars of the ancient world. That's all right here on Miracles of Nature.